So a couple months ago, I made a video uh, or several videos criticizing um, neo-Darwinianism. Um, I myself am what I would call a Darwinist. Uh, I certainly believe, uh, and in fact, I think it's almost safe to say I know that all life on planet Earth uh, derives from uh, a common historical ancestor, um, and that through a process of evolution, uh, this common ancestor uh, diversified and became the many forms, uh, the many organisms that we recognize today. Uh, where I may differ with Darwin is the extent to which uh, natural selection is the main mechanism by which this evolution occurs. Um, I am not a neo-Darwinianist, and in fact I have many criticisms of neo-Darwinianism, which uh, I hope to make a series of videos explaining uh, what exactly those criticisms are. Um, the idea of gradual change um, I will criticize. I think uh, Stephen Jay Gould has shown with his notion of punctuated equilibrium, which you know isn't uh, his idea. Uh, he's kind of taking, borrowing it from people, uh, theorists prior to him, but uh, he really popularized the idea that, uh, in fact, if we look, you know, at the Cambrian explosion, uh, for example, um, it appears that speciation occurs because of uh, catastrophes, um, and they. Uh, these catastrophes spur uh, great variation in the forms of life very quickly, much quicker than uh, Darwin's uh, understanding of gradual uh, accumulation of mutation and adaptation uh, to an environment. Um, there's also the notion that this, uh, I disagree with, about adaptation being something, uh, well, the general metaphor is that life adapts to an environment that's already there uh, and that the environment shapes the organism uh, such that the organism becomes fit as though it were fitting into uh, a niche that's waiting in the environment uh, for the organism to find. Um, I think this is a misleading metaphor because life, all life, uh, even if we go back to um, you know the original forms of life which arose on this planet the um, uh, bacteria and the uh, you know uh, cyanobacteria and such their process of uh, photosynthesis um, adapted the environment uh, to their needs as much as uh, they adapted to the environment in other words the atmosphere that we breathe today is a result of life it wasn't there shaping life but in fact is uh, a creation of life and so the environment adapts to life just as much as life adapts to the environment um, I'm also going to try to work in complexity theories to try to understand better uh, exactly how ontogeny takes place how an organism develops um, there may be more laws involved in biological diversity, uh, phylogeny, but more specifically ontogeny, uh, than can be accounted for by natural selection alone. Um, so we'll get into that as well in subsequent videos. Uh, also, the idea of symbiogenesis, that um, most uh, change throughout evolutionary uh, history has been the result of acquiring whole genomes, uh, you know, organisms acquiring whole genomes uh, and in inheriting um, already uh, sort of already developed uh, strategies for survival rather than having to gradually find them by mutation, random mutation. Um, you know, an example of this is eukaryotic cells are an amalgamation of many um, many uh, prokaryotic cells uh, in the case of plants, chloroplasts, uh, and animals, mitochondria, um, the nucleus itself. Uh, these are symbiotic relationships that developed after one cell 
ate another and then instead of digesting it actually formed uh, a partnership with it. Um, this may in fact, you know, with more study, uh, turn out to be the greater cause of, uh, of speciation than natural selection uh, and random gene mutation. Um, what else? Uh, so, you know, there'll be some other uh, critiques as well, but, um, you know, this is just an introduction. Uh, hopefully others will join in, offer me some criticisms of my criticisms, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But um, thanks for listening, and uh, I look forward to continuing this series.